evening and welcome everyone to the Highway Parks and Recreation meeting uh, June 3rd. We have some visitors. I just want to acknowledge, I think, and then we can, uh, uh, Lori, we can take quick attendance. Um, I think we have uh, Mr. Thornton with us. Are you, are you there, Mr. Thornton? He was. Um, and then we have, uh, who else do we have? We have Jean Sosnow. Good morning, Jean. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. And then I believe we, we might have another person, uh, Connie, Connie Natus, and I may be mispronouncing that last name. Um, and do we have any other uh, visitors with us this morning? Okay. Uh, well, uh, Lori, why don't you why don't you take attendance quick, and then we'll get started on approval of the minutes. You got it. All right. There's myself, um, Linda O'Brien, Brian Backus, yeah. Chief McManus, Elizabeth Falcon Hawley, Eric Amberger. Jean Susnow, Julie Lore, Laura Robertson, Matt Yetto, Michelle Martinelli, Bill Lawrence, Rosemary Jaquith, Paul Briggs, Paul Sebesta, Pete Ravicka, Ray Smith, Roy Thornton, Stan Faminsky, and Supervisor Syed. Have I missed anyone? Okay, maybe that Elizabeth is Colleen. Um, so we have a couple of spots on the agenda for a Let's get this Josh Hawley. That's my wife's. Oh, I'm, I'll my them <laughs> Sorry. Gosh. I've got the same thing going. I've got my daughter's picture and name up there, but it's me. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, maybe Colleen hasn't joined us. Oh, and I think Alexis just joined us. Uh, so let's get started with uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, anybody have any, um, changes that they need to make all right uh, I, have a, I have a suggestion who is that Paul oh hi good morning Paul good morning um, I don't know if it's common to put relevant comments or um, guest comments in the minutes but they exist in the last bullet that Lori uh, put on her minutes uh i don't know what you're i don't i'm not clear on what you're saying i are you saying they're missing something or they should or they sh there's something there there's, that some, should be there there's a relevant information at the end of the minutes less bullet oh the, the part that it says taylor and and lily right. say hello okay i'm sorry right. oh, we can remove that i was trying Thank to you. be a little bit lighthearted. Uh, i like being lighthearted, but this is business and lighthearted has its place Okay. Any That's other? I mean, that, you can do what you want. Any no other? Problem. Any other changes? Okay. They were very comprehensive. We like to it basically capture the entire meeting. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Who is that? Me, Lori. Can someone, someone second that? I'll oh, second okay. it. All right, Mr. Backus. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we move on to public comment. Uh, a couple of our visitors actually have a spot in the agenda. Uh, yeah, so um, Alexis has our visitor, Colleen. Uh, is it Connie? Connie, has she joined us yet? Connie? Thank you. Thanks. She just called me a couple of nice. minutes. Go saying that she was going to be trying to dial in, so maybe we can. Yeah, we can, yeah we, we can fit her in later. I just know that Jean has a spot in the, in the agenda, and so does Mr. Thornton. So, hello, can you hello. hear me? Oh, Hi. Hi. This Hi. is Connie Nottis. Hi, yes. Connie. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Phones <laughs> don't always cooperate with me. No, oh, I know technology sometimes. I'm uh, good morning. My name is Rosemary Jaquith, and welcome to the uh, Highway Parks and Recreation meeting. Thank you. Um, so we just were in making introductions, noting new people, citizens that have joined us, and we're at the public comment portion 
uh, of the meeting, we start that off. We So we, we understand you have some things you'd like to share with us. Yes. Um, first of all, I love the town of Niskeun and have lived here forever. And I've lived across the street from Bakerwood for 37 years. And you guys do a terrific job. And so does the highway department. So the sci- saying is, see something, say something. So a huge tree fell down across the road. The, I called. I saw it fall. Um, the highway department picked up the part in the tree, a part of the tree, right away. That was wonderful. Well, weeks go by and weeks go by. Nothing happens. They didn't clean up the rest of the tree. This is the problem. It had many broken branches sticking up like swords, and the kids were playing on the tree. I was afraid the kids were going to get impaled or something happened. I guess with this pandemic, parents get tired of their kids and just say, go to the park. But no parents are around. So um, I called the town and got hold of um, Ms. Syed's secretary. And he gave me her email address and his email address and asked me to email. So I did. I emailed for a couple of weeks. Got no reply from either one of them. Okay. So I thought, I guess they don't care. Oh, and I did try calling again. It says the mailbox is full. I tried again. The mailbox is full. No people. Kids still playing. Okay. So a friend of mine has a friend who said, I'll take care of the tree so the kids are safe. Meanwhile, Mr. Kelly comes by and he at least cuts off the branches that are sticking up like swords. Great. Now we have another problem. The tree is now a runway, and it can bounce up and down on the end facing the road near where I could see from my house because I was putting jigsaw puzzles together on my dining room table. Kids are bouncing up and down on the end and pushing each other off. Well, kids are rolling under the bouncing up and down end, and I'm afraid one of the kids is going to get squashed, an arm taken off, hit in the head, or whatever. So... I call Skip, a friend, and he says he'll come over. He came over April 28th, I guess it was, and cut the tree. He cut off the dangerous um, end that the kids were jumping up and down on. He cut the tree in sections with the intention of taking that part of the tree away. He has a trailer with a small crane or hoist that he can lift wood by himself, but, you know, of course, I'd help him, and so would my my neighbors, Pat Lusted and stuff, if he comes, um, he would take the crane away. Well, a truck pulls up, very nice man, Um, turns out it's Mr. Smith, who, Tim Smith, who did not identify himself, and um, Peter, are a very nice man, like him a lot, um, said we had to stop and desist, desist, because we didn't have any orders. We told him we had tried to t- call um, and email Mrs. Syed with no no effect at all. And we were trying to take matters in our own hands before a, a kid got killed. The town got a lawsuit. It was a hazard. The reason we started with Mrs. Syed, Ms. Syed in the beginning is because I had stopped a town truck, highway truck, and said, how do we get this tree out of the woods? And the guy in the truck said, oh, you have to call the town supervisor. And we get her our orders from her. So that's why I started with her in the very beginning. Um, anyway, so Skip came. He cut up the tree, most of the tree. But he couldn't finish all of it because of um, Peter and Ray Smith saying he had to stop. Which, okay, fine, he stopped. And uh, there are five other trees involved that are now topless. They're small around, probably six inches across, that need to come down to. Um, um, Skip said he could cut those down if you wanted them down. By the way, Skip is doing all this for free just because he was concerned about the kids in the woods, too. And he's doing it because also he needs the wood for his house because he burns wood in his house because he has no other form of heating. And his woodlot was underwater in April. And that's why he was very interested in our wood. So I would like your permission for the town, either either Skip or the highway department, to cut down the tree. Because now the problem is 
the kids or somebody has turned over sections. They have parties there. There's glass, there's beer bottles, there's wine bottles, there's Bacardi rum bottles. Fine. I'm not picking them up anymore. The other thing, there's a part of the tree that is left standing. (laughs) This is an interesting one. (laughs) So some kids brought their bicycles and they were trying to balance their bicycles and ride their bicycles on the top of the fallen tree. That was interesting. Another girl uses it as a balance beam for handstands. So uh, it's been entertainment. Now the leaves are out and I really can't see much of the tree and I really don't care anymore about what goes on over there because I've done my part and tried to tell the town and save you from a lawsuit. So it's up to you to either tell Skip he can come get the wood or have the highway department cut up those trees. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm your neighbor, by the way. I, uh, I, so I'm, I live over on Keys, not far from that park. Um, oh. so, uh, hello again, neighbor. Um, I hello, don't know. What's your name again? Rosemary Jaquith. Uh, I guess I don't know you. That's Sorry. Right. Stop by next time. I'm in the house with all the flowers. Yeah, I, we will. I'm sure we'll meet at some point if we haven't already. Um, I, did, I did walk on your street when I was campaigning, so I don't know if I stopped at your house or not. Um, anyway, early home <laughs> in the regular time. <laughs> uh, anyway, Ray, um, I don't know if you want to jump in here on this. Our, our Ray Smith is on the call. Yes, I do. Uh, actually, for some clarifications, if you're taking minutes, um, I've never met Connie. Um, is, that wasn't you that day with Peter that day that didn't say a word to me, but everybody told me it was Peter uh, was uh, Ray Smith. So I'm sorry if they identified you wrong. Yeah, no, no, that wasn't me. Um, okay. I never have a problem talking with anybody identifying myself. Um, Peter was called there on a on somebody had called and said that there was people cutting trees in the park. Um, I I understand what you're trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, it's just, a, it's a liability problem. I, I, I don't, I think, I think Paul Sebastian, our town controller will, will say, you know, people in, in town owned parkland with chainsaws is just a no go. Um, I know. And I try yeah. to do the right thing, but I couldn't see a kid getting killed under that tree either. And I thought, Hey, if nobody's going to respond to me, I've got to do something. And I, and I totally understand that you're you're trying to protect the kids, and I totally get you're trying to do the right thing. And you know it's right outside your window, um, and you see this stuff go on. And, and we're just as passionate. Um, unfortunately, you know, with the COVID thing during this whole thing, yeah, we're fifty percent staff. We have a lot going on. It's not that your concerns are not important to us. We will get there in time. Um, there's just so much going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so the town, the town will take care of the tree. The town will take care of the tree. Thank you. Hey, Ray. Gen- generally in that area, Alexis, stay in your lane. Um, generally in that type of situation, like that wooded area in the park, you, we've been over there multiple times for leaning trees, which you or your neighbors have called on. We try to get them to the ground at least so that they don't aren't a danger to anybody. Right. Um, and then periodic, periodically come back and clean it up when we have time. The most okay. important thing is to to diffuse the hazard, a leaning tree, something sticking out in the road. That that's our number one. Right. And then, you know, we may go on the back burner for a little bit. But you know, we're our concerns are as much as yours. Um and and also, I know you're trying to do the right thing, but the liability involved in uh, you taking uh, going in there with chainsaws or or your friend, I get that you're trying to do the right thing. It's just a huge liability for us. I knew it was a kind of a liability, but well, yet when I called, I got no, no response from the emails, and when I called, it said her mailbox was full. So what was I supposed to do when I talked to a town guy in the truck? He said they didn't have anything to do with it. They had to get all their all their um, things from um, the town supervisor. So it's like, Um, hey, are you there? This is super. Are you? Um, And and you know that I did respond to your email. So I'm not quite sure um, why you continue to say that you didn't hear from anybody. You did respond, but it was a month after my first email. And 
my and first there was email. A about that, you actually reached out to a personal email address of mine, and I did respond to you. But we yes, asked, you did. We asked, but it was a month later. And but you had regular communication with my executive secretary, and he's but he, on the call. But he never responds either. We he never responds, and your Connie, mailbox was full. Connie, we had an yes. internal process, and this mm -hmm. is the process we and we have to follow. Uh, rules of liability so that mm -hmm. just like we wouldn't want a child to get hurt, we also wouldn't want you or Skip or whoever's cutting up wood on town property to get hurt either. I agree. And our deputy town attorney, Alexis, and Kim can elaborate on that as well. Hey, Connie. Right. Yes. Connie, this is Ms. Smith again. Hey, yes, um, Mr. Smith. I think in the future, if you call the highway directly, um, okay. Seven eight five nine seven five three. Um, seven eight five nine seven five three. three. Uh -huh. If you call us directly, we we maintain the park. So, if it's something Thank that you. I need to involve the the supervisor in, if it's outside of my authority, then I will do so directly myself. I think if you want to deal directly with with us. Um, yeah, to, I did in I the beginning. I we could do that. I think that's simpler. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, I, I just think it'll go smoother, and I think, you know, you'll have more of a one-on-one a -on -one contact, and, you know, hopefully we can get everything as a, at, at a resolve. Exactly. So the whole thing started because of misinformation from the guy in the highway truck in the beginning, whoever he was who told me to tell call this work deal with the town supervisor well i i'm sorry ma'am a, a <laughs> lot of times they direct people i mean they're they're workers they're not management if you if you would have happened across uh one of my crew leaders my my foremans um mm -hmm. they would have obviously directed you in the right direction or could, okay. could you contact with me so i i think that's the way to handle this going forward um, yeah, I mean, you're always right. welcome to talk to the supervisor, but, um, you know, I think in this type of situation, I think you're better off dealing with me. I agree. Thank you. Hey, Ray, okay. Question, though, Ray. So, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Connie. So this is Alexis Kim speaking. Um, so does Mulligan's have, is, I know you said that the highway maintains Baker Street or the Baker of Park, but didn't we award that contract to Mulligan's and we went through the whole bidding process? Wait or? a minute. Um, Miss Kim, my phone is a little hazy. Got to speak a little um, slower. <laughs> yes, That's I've been told I speak fast. <laughs> All right, I was just asking a point of clarification. So Pat Kelly, I know you mentioned him. Connie, yeah. I, I believe we, we awarded him, um, but yes. we agreed to a contract to maintain that park. So, yep. right, are we able to ask him to remove the tree or is it still within the jurisdiction and responsibilities of the highway department? It's still Let's within decide. the jurisdiction and responsibilities of the highway department. He mows the lawn, he said. That, that is true. I spoke with Pat Kelly yesterday, and uh, his contract is only for mowing um, of the park. He, he's, he doesn't go in and remove trees. Um, his yep. contract is strictly mowing and uh, general cleanup of, you know, small branches that are down and stuff yep. like that. Not, nothing to do with the large wooded area. That's correct. Okay, so okay. are we good, Connie? We're good, so as long as I know that the highway department or the parks department is gonna cut up the rest of the tree and if any small children get hurt doing anything really stupid, that's okay. But I'm also saying I'm not going in the woods anymore. I'm picking up any beer, wine bottles or glass that likes to appear nights okay we will thank you for uh you know joining us today we'll you know drain as guys again we've been uh you know we will get to it as soon as we possibly can and mm -hmm. uh, thank you for alerting us and uh please join us anytime <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much okay You're but welcome. i love living here and love the park so thank you uh, very much for all you do thank you okay thank you so much have a good day right. thanks you too bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Okay, anyone else for a public comment? I know we have a, a you know, couple of people in the agenda, but um, 
Anyone else? Otherwise, we'll move to uh, the next item, which is Highway and Parks. Ray, you can take it from here. I do have a presentation on the grassland habitat. Oh, yes. Mr. Thornton, we have you um, in the agenda. You probably don't even have an agenda in front of you, but when we get to your point, I will um, I will ask you to uh, to engage us on the presentation, okay? Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And thanks again for joining us this morning. All right, Ray. Okay. Um, if you're ready. Number three is uh, water-related breaks. Uh, there was zero this month. Um, so there's no bill attached there. Uh, number four is yard waste. Um, we are still uh, currently on a random pickup. Um, and just for the notes, we have made it through the town uh, every week. Everything has been covered. So there has been no uh, lapse in service. Um, some zones have taken us, you know, a day and a half rather than a day, but there has been no lap so that everybody who has been, uh, paying for the yard waste service has, uh, received that service. Um, number five is a uh, tentative paving schedule. So on the attached, uh, paving schedule, um, for 2020, um, we are scheduled to pave the first three roads on the list, which is Alva, Port Huron, and Dynamo Court, which are all linked together right off of Van Antwerp Road. Our tentative paving date for that is the week of June 21st. Um, and then we will move on to uh, four through eight, as they are all in a different section of town. Um, and I have talked to um, Richie Keller and uh, Tony Scabia from the Water Department. Um, we've been collaborating together. Um, they have been uh, diligently working on their stuff. Um, they, they have been there and in front of us, so we're really not gonna get all jammed up together. I, uh, the work they've been doing is great. Um, and now they have moved on to the second set doing uh, what they need to do um, four through eight. They're working on them streets currently. So uh, we'll be moving in that direction, hopefully starting next week uh, with milling and uh, prepping of our, our uh, infrastructure on them roads. Um, the crews now are actually, I'll, I'll just touch briefly on it, are, are doing mill cuts and uh, finishing up the paving of the, the bike path. So uh, from there, they'll be going to um, that first set of roads to start working on them, hopefully next week. Great, thanks, Ray. Okay, uh, number six, fleet management program, Geotab. Um, we had a, a video conference on that. Um, I think two, we had an initial one, then we had a little more detailed one. Um, I know they had sent us some, uh, some paper copies for us to uh, go over and uh, look at. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we, sh we uh, internally should meet on that again and, and compare. Yeah, Alexis, you want to jump in? So um, for those of you who are, um, haven't heard of Geotab, it's essentially a fleet management program. Currently, we use Verizon. Uh, it installs a small device in each of our uh, vehicles, whatever ones that we decide. And it provides us with real-time viewing of where our vehicles are, um, information regarding uh, you know, mileage, which we, information regarding maintenance, et cetera. Um, Geotabs is appear apparently appears to not be the standard for fleet management. And they, um, we met with a representative who said that that Schenectady recently switched over to Geotab as well as Rotterdam and the New York State Department of Transportation and at the federal government and, and then state of California. So they do have some street credibility. Um, but there is no, if we're on New York State contract, 
There's no contractual obligation, meaning each month we could cancel. And the, the plan is $12.30 a month per vehicle. I think Verizon is more than that per vehicle right now. So we were discussing um, of the highway fleet, try, starting off with about 25 vehicles, because that's the, that's the threshold for um, getting a project manager assigned uh, and getting a lower price point. And uh, you know, if we're happy with it, then we'll perhaps switch over the remaining vehicles and highway from Verizon to, to Geotab. But that decision hasn't been finalized because like I said, we just had this long uh, presentation the other day and we haven't been able to regroup. And you know, I ran this by Paul Sebesta at a very high level. Um, didn't really give him much time, much of a headway, but I don't, we could run the numbers, but I, uh, I believe there is a, a big, uh, uh, a cost savings of money that we had already budgeted for for Verizon. Yeah, but Paul, yeah. Paul, Hi. you were you were uh, sorry. I, I you know you had talked early on about this fleet management issue, and I know it's something of interest to you. And uh, definitely think if there's another presentation, you know, you should sit in on that and go through and ask your questions, Paul, because I know you're particularly interested in this um, and want, obviously want your feedback on it for sure. Yes, I am interested and I missed the first two meetings. Um, I was just informed about the concept yesterday. Um, I briefly looked over Geotab and Verizon and it's essentially the same service um, at electric price. One glaring difference was that um, they do, it, it appears um, from my brief review that they do not offer towing services, which we admittedly haven't been taking advantage of through Verizon, but it is a nice um, part of the service we get now. So just want to point that out and I'd like to look at it, sure. Yeah, it was, it was, it was really impressive, Paul. They were talking about how they can, you know, basically track the vehicles where they can, you know, they talked about, uh, you know, um, um, they can track when people go home for lunch, for example, if they're there too long. Um, they can, you know, track speed if someone's wearing, you know, you know uh, following other safety protocols. I really thought it was something you would be really, really yeah. interested in. So, well, that, if you knew Verizon's program, that's the same thing Verizon okay. does. It, it tracks, it gives you alerts for speeding, uh, abuse, fast starts. It's it's the same basic program. It may be a little more enhanced. I, I haven't had any opportunity to look at it. Hey, All right. Paul. Yes. I, um, just curious, um, Water and Sewer has quite a few vehicles, and so do the police. Why weren't we involved in this? Uh, I can actually um, speak to that. You so like me. <laughs> no, I, so I, this initially came up in January uh, where it was a mixed presentation. It's the representative is actually a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I mentioned that he, you know, has services that he thought he could offer in the SCUNA, like including you know, upgraded cell phones, which I said forward along to Paul Sebesta. And then he mentioned this geotab system. And if you recall, during finance committee, back when we were discussing bonding, we were trying to develop a fleet management policy, and kind of where we had left off was just preparing an Excel with mileage. Um, so. At this point, it would be a little bit more complicated. It's going to be the same price probably across the board, but like police would have a lot different needs than like say highway because they don't need to necessarily know if someone is speeding, and they also have different security concerns because I don't think we want GPS tracking them all the time. So but we could, they currently, do they currently have Verizon? I'm not sure, but I know that the program. I just it wasn't a de deliberate decision saying we're not doing it. With, Police, we're not doing it with water and sewer. We're not, we're not only doing it with highway. It was it makes sense to look at it departmentally what their needs are. Uh, like with respect to fuel, when it came up when we were talking about the sharing the fuel station, and Ray was saying how his department has to annually track how much fuel they're using. Your, your department needs a different process. So I mean, besides, besides the point, this was sent to Denise and I both, and so I said to Eric explicitly that we're gonna it would have to go through each committee meaning if you're interested in it matt it would go through your committee as well and okay. maybe make a decision for yours because your trucks you know your considerations may be different than raise raise i think we were thinking more of the really larger trucks like especially the, like the ones that we use for plowing so if you're interested in it um i know denise has the or councilman mcgraw has the contact information and was on those initial emails and all of the emails so i can set up a meeting with 
but sure. Yeah, because, I mean, we have it in we have the Verizon in almost every one of our vehicles, and um, if it's a savings, then absolutely we would we would benefit. Now, is this a T-Mobile system that the county's using? Yeah, yeah. I think I told you guys about it in the winter. No, you didn't, I, I didn't hear that from you. I actually saw the county system in, firsthand, and it looked good. I, I I saw the interface, and I saw how they. I know they haven't fully implemented it yet. They they haven't converted all their vehicles. They have a few of them converted, and they're doing more and more every day. But um, it, it seems to have the same functionality as the, the Verizon system. Yeah, I think that the big, what, what popped to mind is because it may just be, there are not really that many citizen complaints, but one of the features that I thought was interesting was that to the extent that we get complaints that, or not complaints, that people allege that, you know, a plow hit their mailbox or that, um, you know, some uh, somebody was somebody's car was damaged by another town vehicle. This um, T-Mobile is able to store all of the GPS data indefinitely on a secure uh, platform, yeah. and so that and that that their documentation is um, can be used as evidence in court. And they said that they'll they'll stand by it. Um, so I mean, not that we are anticipating a lawsuit, but I thought that could solve a lot of problems when we get the complaints and allegations of. Well, no yeah, I mean, I think the Verizon basically does all that. We've used it in fast in, in the past for tracking fire hydrants that were as people were cleaning fire hydrants from from, from the snow, uh, damage to lawns. We've tracked vehicles that way. Um, I just think it's the cost is the, the big saving. And, and to Paul's point too, um, they do not include the plow uh, the uh, the towing. Um, that was one thing I talked to the county about, and um, we have utilized it. Um, it it's not. We have a lot of vehicles, but yeah, we haven't used it a lot. I've tried to encourage the use of it, but um, whenever we have a breakdown, we use it. Good. And they've actually towed our ten-wheeler dump dump trucks under the same program. Right. It all covered. It's all covered. Yeah. So it's able to pick plow. I mean, it's able to pick up even the really big trucks, not just like you know the pickup truck. No, I'm just saying. That yes. Was, yes. They, they pick up all the trucks. Oh, excellent. So it's a, it's yeah, a great I, value, but you do pay for it. You're talking significant, you know, it's a, it's a savings, no doubt, but it, it's essentially the same service, but I like okay. savings. Thankfully, oh, we don't have a lot of towing needs. So it, that, that's, that's one trade off, I guess. So I will send, um, Matt, I'll send you the, all of the information that we've received to date. And I'm not sure, but this is a Paul Sylvester question. Um, I don't know if this would just require if we wanted to do a trial. So Ray identified like 25 vehicles that if we were to move forward, he would want to just try as a month. Um, that would be about $307.50, which is below the threshold. I know for town board resolution, I think it just requires department head and perhaps finance. So um, Paul Sebasti, I know that if there's an intention of, of buying more in the future, that you, it requires resolution similar to the one we encountered with the traffic signs. But since this one, we really aren't contractually obligated. I think this does not need to be a town board resolution. It can be just made at the department head level. Yeah, I think um, that is true. It's at the point where um, we anticipate exceeding whatever threshold would require town board action finance committee. So whenever we, into, if we make a decision part way in that we're gonna continue, then we'll take the appropriate action. I'd love to have it because we currently utilize the Verizon. Uh, my supervisors use it to to see where guys are, uh, and and I use it if I wake up in the morning after a water break to see when our vehicles got back to the garage. It's it's very useful. Oh yeah, no, I'll definitely send it to you, Matt, and I can explain more about it. Thank you. Okay, more to come on that. Um, Ray, back to I think we're on number seven, the personnel update. Ray, your mic's off. It's better that way, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um, personnel update. Workforce back 100% uh, from the COVID break. Um, still, uh, you know, doing our personal distancing. Um, still doing uh, support vehicles rather than having multiple people in a vehicle. Um, cleaning safety protocol is all still in place. So, um, but we are back a hundred percent. Um, the second bullet on that, um, 
the highway and parks department is down um, three retirements, two actual retirements, one as of the end of this month, he's on vacation, but, and will not return, but his official date is the 26th of June. Um, one out on workers' compensation. So I'm, I'm thinking that's probably more than seven months. I don't know if Paul has any kind of update on that. Um, looking no update. Up, no no update. update. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I lost my spot. So um, that's where we are at staff wise. Um, uh, yeah, there's a bullet about the not not bringing in the temporary laborers. Yeah. So we have not brought in um, labor ready for the Packers. We are currently using in-house uh, due to concerns with the COVID. Um, myself have concerns. Uh, my employees have concerns. Um, so we are doing the best that we can there. Uh, you know, we're looking forward. Things are just slowly starting to open. We're seeing how it works. We'll evaluate that in time. Um, so like I said, the work is getting done. We're a little, uh, we're a little light as far as people, but we're making it work. So, um, that's where we are on that. Uh, number eight, um, hire independent contractors. Essentially what that is, is retirees from the highway. We've done it in the past. Um, Paul had set up a budget for us, uh, in the past. We have some, uh, some money, um, those retirees would be used in, in parks. That's where that budget is, uh, basically to, to mow, uh, to do light maintenance in the parks. Um, I spoke with Paul yesterday. He gave me uh, some good information um, as I call them uh, concerning uh, the hours that can be worked and such like that. So I did follow up with Paul yesterday on that. Just um, wanted to add that um, provision or section of the budget was under uh, Supervisor Landry that we uh, expanded the use and, and tried to get this program going. We haven't done much of it, but this is an opportunity to, to um, if there, there are um, retirees available to get them back and supplement and get caught up. Uh, one, one thing that uh, concerns me is that I've noticed lately that we have people working out of title across the town, not a lot, but, um, and I, I think it should stop or unless, and I don't think it's been approved by the supervisor as a um, reassignment of duties under the pandemic. Um, but uh, there's one in your department, Trey, that um, is working out of title and I don't want to get into names, but it's of concern. So we either need to appoint them to the proper title or use them as they were hired. Okay. So does that require additional resolutions or is there any? I don't know if it's gonna continue. So it's up to, um, I can discuss discuss it further. I, I, uh, right. I would need I would need uh, uh, to talk to you on the phone about that, Paul, to identify what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. No, no doubt. And I'd rather not get into particulars, but. Um, I, I think it's a discussion to have on the phone. Sure. And then just one other clarification for the independent contractor resolutions. Can we use the same agreement that we've been using for the water and sewer for the, um, for the water uh, treatment plant? independent contractors or do you think it needs to be more tailored because that that position requires just, let me let me just cut you off this was um established as rehiring temp laborers um under the maximum you know allowable earnings through as a retiree it's not a it's not an independent contractor it's a temp laborer okay thank you paul does that have to be limited to our retirees or can we look outside of here there's no, it doesn't even have to be retirees really, but it was, that was the thought at the time, but yes, you can look outside. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. 
Um, the second part of that is uh, a posting of a crew leader position. Uh, this is one of the retirees that did retire, uh, was a crew leader um, in my mechanic shop. Um, and I would like to uh, post that, uh, get some uh, feedback on that, uh, some interviews, and hopefully uh, bring something to the board um, for that. Okay. Um, thanks, Ray. Um, next we're going to move on to, uh, the Gene, you're going to, Gene, this is uh, where you come in. We're at the end cap part. And, um, a couple of months ago before the pandemic, Gene joined us at a highway committee meeting and was talking about um, NCAP's continued partnership with the town um, and offered, uh, talked about offering, um, you know, up some signs for our um, public spaces. And so Gene was going to go back. We had a lot of questions. There was a lot of dialogue. And I think Gene is going to provide us with an update. Gene, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All Thank right. you for putting me on the agenda. I think things got a little uh, dropped over two months on my end of things with uh, everything that was going on. So I touched bases with Alexis to see um, what the parameters would be for providing the signs. And it um, it appears that it would be best if NCAP actually purchase, purchases the signs and provides them to the town. Um, then we wanted to talk about what kind of language was permissible on the sign. And I think from NCAP's point of view, we'd like something more graphic, similar to the no smoking signs that were put up. Um, I'm assuming that this will be a, 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 a sign in and of itself. We're not replacing anything that's already there. And uh, then the discussion becomes, does it get added to a post that's existing or do we provide the posts also? We're thinking about maybe a two, 24 by 18 inch sign um, the message would be that if this is a substance-free area, maybe use the logos for the no marijuana, no alcohol, no other substances. Um, Alexis mentioned perhaps putting in a town ordinance um, on the sign and also a message that would be if you see suspicious activity, contact, whatever that would be. You know, obviously this would be town of Niskayuna and then um, sponsored by whatever this, so we would get the NCAP and this unit community action program at the bottom. Um, she also asked about how many. Well, I, I, bottom line is we started with five because we're thinking maybe three along the bike path. And then um, where we've learned there's problems, the kids report their problems are Avon Crest Park and um, Blatnick Park. But clearly from the conversation that started off this meeting, um, there's problems that at all the parks. And we do have a sufficient budget to, to create more signs than that. So um, I think the next step is to uh, come up with the actual design. So maybe at the next meeting, I can say, this is what we're proposing and be very specific in what the, the words are and what it looks like. That's all really wonderful, Jean. We thank NCAP uh, so much. Again, you know, the partnership that between NCAP and the town and NCAP and the, and the district and just the, our community is tremendous. And uh, we really, really appreciate and value that so much. Um, I, so that sounds like a great idea. You'll propose, you know, language. I think there was some mention about, there might be some dimensions in terms of, uh, or restrictions in terms of the sign size. I think Laura Robertson can speak to that, but, um, but you know, all great, all all really great, and we're very thankful. Thank you. Okay, so so I should follow up with Laura in terms well, of the. Laura's speech. on the phone right now, or is on the conference right now, and I don't know if she can speak to the dimensions. But if she can't right now, we can certainly know make sure that you know that right uh, before right. it created, um, and that the language, of course, we'd want to you know review before um, you, before it print, so to speak, right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and we want it more graphic than a lot of words because we want to make makes an sense. impact on our young people. Yeah, makes sense. Visual is the visual is better for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll make sure you have that. Again, if Laura uh, doesn't have that readily available, we'll make sure that you know what that is. And again, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. 
<laughs> just a quick question. I want to make sure I was uh, accurate. In, in So the question that NCAP had asked, is it easier to provide us with the grant money and us to order the signs or for them to, to order the signs with their grant money and then donate them to the town? I said I said the latter it would be more expeditious because if you remember even like with the historical marker, uh, when we accept grant money, it requires resolution, whereas the process would probably be a lot quicker if they just sort of donate the signs. Is that, um, Paul, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Anytime you can keep the government out of it, it's happy to, happy to do it. And then Thank I brought, you. I mentioned this to Councilman McPartland, who is the chair of the Police and Public Safety Committee yesterday, and they were excited about these signs also. And, you know, I said that we keep them up to date and they would like to look over the language as well. So absolutely. We can we can do a lot of sharing throughout this month so that when, when we come back to you um, for your July meeting, that we have something that uh, has gone pretty well down the road to getting what we want. Thank you. Fabulous. Great. And speaking of parks, uh, we'll move on to the park section. Uh, Ray, are you, you want to take it from there? Yep. Um, River Road and Blatnick Park playgrounds have uh, reopened. Um, Avon Crest is scheduled to reopen this weekend. Um, tennis courts at Blatnick are open. Tennis courts at Avon will be open this weekend with the opening of the park. Um, they've been all cleaned up. Uh, nets have been hung. Um, so those will be scheduled to open with the, with the park over in Avon Crest. Um, basketball issues. Um, the hoops were removed on, uh, at Blatnick Park. Um, I know we haven't had much time to discuss uh, where that's going. So um, trash has been an issue in the parks. Um, a lot of stuff left behind, uh, a lot of dog waste, a lot of, uh, water bottles, a lot of stuff, uh, you know, that's, I, that's a lot of time that it takes us to pick that stuff up, uh, cause we don't run over it and scatter it even more. So a lot of lost yeah. time there. Yeah, we, we, um, I know that the supervisor uh, put a notification out, you know, reminding folks that to carry in, carry out now that things are opening up. And of course, a lot of people are out there walking just, you know, for the rest of us to continue to, you know, enjoy our beautiful spaces to people to remember to, you know, bring their, if they bring trash to bring it home with them as well. Yeah. And there, there has been, we've, we've done a campaign of uh, quite a few more carry in, carry out signs throughout the town uh, over the last couple of years because of the increase in it. Um, so it, it's very, uh, it, it's very well uh, posted in all the parks. Um, bathroom status. Um, I, I don't really know if this is the supervisor or Alexis. I don't uh, really haven't been brought up to speed on uh, the opening of that. Um, so I, I don't know if one of them want to speak to that. Um, I know the parks are open, but the facilities are open. Yeah, we um, were hoping to get the draft reopening plan at least by this evening uh, with a revised memo out to employees on how we're going to be moving forward with um, the playgrounds and the parks in general, reopening the bathrooms. Um, there has been some revised guidelines that have been issued by the governor's office. So we're just going through um, a series of executive orders. Um, just wanting to make sure that, you know, we're adhering to the guidelines properly. I think summer camps can reopen now as of, if it's not June 28th, it's June 29th. Yeah, it's um, June 29th. It's June 29th. Okay, thanks, Rosemary. So with all those things considered, um, I don't think we'll open the bathrooms until, you know, we're opening uh, playground camps because I don't see a reason to, to have those open at the moment. But um, that is something to be distributed soon. Okay, if I could just get a head up, heads up on some of that, Yasmin, because it yep. takes up some time to prep them. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I'll loop you in as soon as we make a decision on that. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, 
Um, okay, and then the last item there was a baseball update. Alexis, do you want to speak to that? Alexis? Yes, um, so this is just referring to, um, uh, we signed an addendum yesterday with Niskuna Baseball, um, who has a license agreement that we've entered into, I think, back in 2004, allowing them to use Blotnick Park baseball fields. Um, they haven't been able to use those due to um, Supervisor Syed's proclamation declaring a state of emergency in the town of Niskuna, which closed um, all, you know, town baseball fields, soccer fields, lacrosse fields, etc. for um, passive use only. So we entered into an addendum that allows them to use the baseball fields under their license agreement um, with the condition that they strictly adhere to New York State guidelines, which, you know, requ require less than 10 people on the fields at each time. Um, they provided us with their written safety plan for, you know, cleaning procedure. And this gets a little bit into the minutia, but until they reach phase, they're considered two, two, they're eligible as two types of businesses under New York Ford. So right now they're um, able to operate on a restricted basis, but at, when we enter into phase four, which is recreation broadly, which will be at some point in July, um, we'll probably have to do a second addendum um, because I'm assuming at that point more industry guidelines will come out and hopefully the nine person uh, limit will be lifted. Uh, I can provide anybody who's interested with a copy of this addendum. I had talked to this about this with um, town attorney Paul Briggs. Um, as soon as a sports organization determines that they're eligible to resume active play um, under New York state guidelines, um, the town should, it should be amenable to entering into an addendum or giving them permission to go forward. It's not as if we were just cherry picking and said, Miss Unit Baseball was able to do this. They affirmatively reached out with, you know, the, the proper documentation showing that they could um, reopen. So I know that I believe the cross has approached us that I haven't had a chance to review it, but I know that this is something that we'll be probably doing with all of the sports organizations who want to resume active play. Alexis, actually, it might be good to get something out. Phase two opened up today, to your point. So meaning, you know, small group instruction can occur. Again, we're still under the 10, you know, the under 10 limit, but we need, we should probably get something out to all the youth organizations um, to sort of let them know that you know, if they're going to start to see baseball, let them know what the parameters are and have them again, um, give us their, give us their plan for implementing the safety protocols, et cetera, that they're responsible for, that they're going to operate under, but they should be able to open up, you know, the, under that, you know, instruction that's allowed in phase two, which commen again commences today. Agreed. And last night, uh, Governor Cuomo issued executive order 20236, which said, specifically says any region that meets the prescribed metrics uh, may allow outdoor low-risk recreational activities and businesses um, providing such activities to operate in accordance with DOH guidelines. So that was yesterday. So I'm, I'm assuming the DOH guidelines for these activities is short to follow. Um, but that said, do, do you think it's worth worthwhile or, or to inform either to maybe in Supervisor Syed's community update to inform the public that, you know, if they see people using the Niskuna baseball fields, that they're, you know, they're doing so with the permission of the town so that we're not receiving phone calls or complaints of, viol I mean, the violations of any type of social distancing. Yeah, it might be good to inform people in general that that's opening up. And, and Paul Briggs, looks like you want to jump in. Did you, um, did you have something to add to this? Sorry. Not to this. I was just asked about the status on the pool. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, Lori, that's the Lori can, Lori can speak to that. She can either speak to it now or, you know, later. I don't, uh, Lori. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Paul said he was asked about the status of the pool. We've still yet to hear from Department of Health. We're waiting. Our safety plan has been submitted. So we're waiting to hear from them as to what their guidelines are and when we can get an inspection. And once the inspection is done, we are free to open up the pool. We were slated to before the pandemic to open it up on June 20th. So we're still not behind 
but we still have a lot to do at the pool. And I think we're waiting to get directives from the Department of Health. Thanks, Lori. You're welcome. Um, okay, so we'll follow up on that, Alexis, and uh, the supervisor in terms of community, uh, com you know, communication on the issue and then more pointed communication to our youth organizations. Um, all right. Uh, we're on to uh, the wildlife, wildlife habitat at Blatnick Park. Mr. Thornton, thanks for joining us this morning. Well, thank you very much for uh, hearing me on this subject. Uh, the, the roots of this go back in back to um, 2012 when Nancy and I noticed some bobolinks on the top of the landfill. Then shortly after that, the uh, mowing, regular mowing commenced, and of course it drove them away. But uh, if you have the time, I have a, a PowerPoint presentation, if that's uh, acceptable to you. Oh, sure, that's, that's fine. That'd be great, thank you. Okay, so I guess I hit present now, and I think you have to do one more step. I can't, uh, Laura, are you on? Oh, here we go. There, there, it's coming on, Mr. Thornton. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how I get, it says you're presenting to everyone. Yeah, that's okay. Just, um, just go on your computer now to the slideshow and make it full screen and we'll see it. Okay. It's a uh, PowerPoint to play from start. Do you see it? Yep. Okay. Um, this uh, habitat management would have benefits not only for grassland birds, but also uh, pollinators and, and uh, butterflies. And their grassland birds and pollinators are having problems. Capped landfills have the advantages of large acreage, the possibility of scheduling the mowing uh, to allow nesting and, and wildflowers. And then of course, uh, very rare use of pesticides and herbicides. Uh, you could get some good publicity out of this. You've got uh, places for students to learn, bird watchers, of course, uh, and hopefully reduce mowing uh, costs. That depends, of course, on uh, the, the details. And Ray Smith, I guess, would be the person for me to work with on that. That's correct. Uh, in order to avoid uh, destroying nests, you need to suspend mowing between June 1 and about the middle of August. The uh, and another requirement is uh, 20 acres for grassland birds. In the case of the uh, capped larger hill of the capped landfill, it wouldn't be necessary to have 20 acres not mowed. The reason for the 20 acres is to shield birds and nesting and so on from woodland predators. So one could have uh, unmowed areas in the center that could then uh, support the nesting. This is a satellite view. Uh, this is the cap, the big hill of the cap landfill. There might be some areas available in area B that could also be suitable for not being mowed. Um, the this the uh, driving range because of the need, I guess, to run machines out to pick up the balls is not suitable. This area here, area C, was set aside by the town to be only mowed once a year. And uh, it's too small for birds, but it's suitable for pollinators. And there was a Girl Scout project to plant some <clears throat> wildflowers on that probably about 2016. In the interim, this little area down here has been filled in. Uh, this 
earth platform has been pushed out into this zone. So that area has shrunk. Another area that was designated for um, reduced mowing once a year, and actually I think it got skipped for a couple of years, is this zone here. It's very steep. That again, by itself is too small for birds, good for pollinators, but it would act as a shield to unmowed areas up on, on A. Uh, disc golf and walking are the uh, other two major activities on that, uh, on those hills. Disc golf, of course, occupies a fairly large area and uh, probably the fairways and access from one hole to another would have to be mowed. I don't know what the, the present limitations are on, uh, on mowers. Uh, Ray could probably talk to that. I've uh, sketched out uh, on a Google map photograph where I think the, the holes are. The, these little rectangles are the launch pads or the tees, and these are the uh, baskets. So you can see there's quite an area that would have to be mowed just to accommodate the disc golf. But I think that if an area in here and here and here was left unmowed, that there would be um, sufficient nesting to support these birds and also the, uh, the pollinators. In the case of pollinators, you need to hold off mowing until after the first frost. There were some things done um, in early in the, uh, my first effort to get this habitat management modified. These signs were put up on the very small area and uh, were designed for Niskayuna. I've forgotten now whether the Audubon Society of the Capital Region bought them or whether they produced the design and Joe Landry and his organization made them and installed them. So there are a couple of these signs there which are nice signs but aren't really doing very much at this point. The, uh, there are some other initiatives for wildflowers, for instance, over in Clifton Park. Um, what I would suggest is put some additional signs, choose unmowed areas, put some additional signs around those areas, publicize it to get your good publicity, and then try to work again with uh, Audubon Society of the Capital Region for summer workshops. Um, I've mentioned this, um, there was a Girl Scout group, I think under Denise that planted a strip of wildflowers in that, that small area. And then there's some other ideas which are not really part of what I'm talking about today. There are other grassland management projects around, but it turns out Niskayuna landfill is the largest and probably only suitable grassland habitat available in Niskayuna. Um, they do have this wildflower initiative. So, um, stop presenting. Okay. There we go. Um, if there's a couple of questions, I can answer those. Um, well, there are I other reasons. Go ahead. Yeah. I was thinking, Mr. Thornton, it might be good to, um, you know, meet offline and um, discuss further sort of the, you know, parameters and figure out what we could do um, to move something like this forward. Um, so um, unless somebody else has any other ideas, I, you know, we could, we could, I think it'd be good to have a meeting, uh, you know, just a smaller group to see what, how we could perhaps move this forward. Granted. I love the idea. Okay, no, that's sound. It sounds great, and I love the I love the ideas. I've you know really well thought out how it could otherwise benefit the community, and I think advertising it as well would be you know would be um, great. So we could talk about ways we could do that um, as well. 
and really to, I need to talk to Ray about those areas and what could be done, you know, as a practical matter, um, et cetera. So unless anybody else has any other ideas at this point, let's, you know, uh, let's make sure we, uh, well, I'll reach out uh, and try and set something up. One good. quick I'm, comment. I'm as, sorry. One quick comment. Um, as part of our closure plan, my recollection is that we were, we are required and committed to mow it twice a year. I'm not certain about that, but it's something we need to, you know, understand. According to the EPA, the only requirement is to keep the brush and trees off. And I believe that according to them, mowing once every three years would take care of that. Okay, and then you know more than I. <laughs> I well, just want to make sure we cover all the bases. Yeah, no good. What the agreement was. Hey, Paul, I can look into the post closure plan. Yeah. Um, I have to. I manage the uh, the overall post closure of the of the, of the landfill. Um, I knew. I do know that the biggest issue would be trees or shrubs growing because Definitely. it has to only be grass. It can't be anything with a deep root, root structure, and we need to keep cover for erosion purposes. Uh, right. I do have the documents. I can look at them and um, give some advice. That'd be yeah, great. We may, we may be fine. I'm just just trying to cover all the bases. And I'd be willing to walk the landfill with uh, anybody, probably Ray, and sort of scope out the areas that could be mowed and, and could be left unmowed. That so sounds if Ray, great. If Ray wants to contact me or vice versa, we can we can do that before. I know the main, the main concern is to have for any um, you know brush or trees to grow and penetrate the, the membrane, the cover. Um, so we, you know, we're probably fine. I'm just being overly cautious. Understand. Okay, so uh, Mr. Thornton, we'll be back in touch, and um, we'll we'll you know take talk discuss next next steps. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So the next thing on the agenda is the Lock Seven update. Ray, last time we talked about this. You were waiting to hear from Canal Corp. They were going to put up some signs or barricades. Do you have any update on that? Um, I've been down there um, over the last week or so. Um, I haven't seen any activity as far as construction. Uh, the machines are all still down there. Um, I did speak with uh, about the signage. Um, I actually referred them to our sign maker uh, because of their because of the COVID, the, the state sign shop was shut down. Um, and I never heard back as to whether the poster boards were made or to be placed in the kiosk that we put up down there. Um, but I don't see any real activity down there. So it, it may all just come together um, quickly. After this, um, I will try to reach out to, I periodically, uh, when they close boat launches and stuff, spoke with the superintendent uh, for the canal system. Um, I was talking to him pretty much uh, once a week there during the shutdown. So um, I'll reach back out to him and see if he has any kind of tentative dates for me and let you know. Okay. Yeah, last I knew there was not a date. I think I had sent you some information about I'd seen from uh, Canal Corp about, uh, uh, you know, lock eight and nine opening somewhere between July 20th and uh, August 10th, but there was no update on the Niskina one. So, um, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay. Laura, Tree Council, Complete Streets, it's at Union, uh, the Union Street update. Um, Tree Council has just been reviewing planning board projects and working on the street tree master plan more than anything else. But uh, Ray can attest to this. We did go out, I think on a, two Saturdays ago and figure out where to plant the, the spring trees that had come from their special trees like parks trees. And um, it ended up being a lot of work for the highway department because, you know, we noticed in some of the places that we wanted to have trees, there were some trees that probably needed to be taken down 
And um, anytime that, you know, we create a laundry list of tree planting for the highway department, <laughs> it's a lot of work. But Mike has been communicating with me on it uh, regularly. And uh, maybe Ray knows more than I do, but they were at least a third to halfway done with the tree planting that was specific to the fall purchase order. Um, do you have anything else on that, Ray? Yeah, I think uh, we've done about 22 replacement trees off of Blackers list, uh, just roadside trees. And I think the number of trees and the, the smaller bushes that you had purchased uh, is right in that range, too. And I think Mike's probably two thirds of the way through. I know he's waiting on some locations um, for the, I know there was some moving around, like you said, a couple weekends ago. You moved some stuff around. Yeah, uh, at Lexington and stuff. Yeah. There's a few along the bike path there. Obviously, we're paving the bike path right now, so they're on hold. Um, but they're being watered and uh, cared for down here. Uh, so when uh, you know that that is that project is complete, and I know Mike uh, was meeting with Tony from the water department. Um, you got to you locate water mains better than anybody with your flags, but I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you should have been a locator. <laughs> so, so anyway, you know, Mike is adjusting a little bit or um, such, which, you know, he does. So I, he's actually out planning again today. So hopefully we'll be a little closer to completion on that. Um, but we have done good, even with the COVID thing, you know, 22 roadside trees is uh, a lot to do with doing social distancing and that. So the program's yeah. working. It's phenomenal. Like, I think that this spring has just been really awesome. And I very much appreciate everything you guys are doing. A lot of times um, spring is just so busy that it's hard for us to even get a couple trees in. And so maybe some silver lining in the crazy world. We very, very, very much appreciate you guys making trees a priority um, because when when things were shut down, it was at least something that, that you guys could still work on. Yep. Oh. I'm glad it's working. A lot of trees are being put out and uh, the people uh, that we've been doing the replacement trees for uh, Mike's had nothing but a good experience with them. So Yay. thank you. And uh, I think it's going in the right direction. Definitely. So that's great. And I really appreciate it. And I know it's a lot of work and I really appreciate it. Um, the complete trees committee has also been focused on planning board projects right now. Um, I did know, and I don't know if we ever followed up, um, that, and you, I didn't hear you saying them, Ray, but maybe I, I was not paying as best attention as I could, but when we reviewed the paving list, a couple of the streets that were getting paved were on our on-road bike path, and so we were just, I don't know if it's feasible or not, we actually have the, um, you know, we have the Shero we bought it. So we actually have that Shero sign. And, you know, I, I don't have any more of the paint that is that was supposed to wash away and never did. But, um, you know, by, I think that it would be a low cost thing. And I only received good word on the Sharos that we put on Orchard, except that they were supposed to go away and they never did. But I don't know if um, you guys are comfortable putting the Sharos on there after the roads repaved or if that's a conversation on another day. I just noticed that from, that was a complete streets recommendation for the paving if we're starting the paving up again. I think that would be a conversation for another day when uh, things are done. Um, you know, obviously we try to work with the complete streets program uh, to some degree. I, I think, uh, you know, rather than take up a lot of time here, I think it can be something that can be looked at, um, you know, as we progress. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Upper Union Street, I, I heard from the police chief, I heard from the fire chief, I believe, Ray, you said you were fine with the Upper Street, Union Street plan. Um, and then the only thing that somebody commented on was like, let's make sure the county's seen it before we go any farther with the engineering. So I sent it to the county in early, uh, early May. I know that everybody's extremely busy. I haven't actually heard back from them. So I think I'll probably just follow up with the county. And as long as conceptually they're fine with it, I think we've at that point covered all bases and then we can um, finalize the engineering on that. 
Yeah, that was my recommendation was follow up with the county, seeing it was their road. I, I, you know, we know that they're somewhat know what the project is, but being it's their road, you always want to have their blessing just to, you know, rather than a surprise. So that was my Great. recommendation. It was a good one. Thanks, Ray. Okay, then uh, also uh, speaking of bike path paving, uh, both, you know, Laura and Ray, could you give us an update on that? That's Ray. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a brief summary of the paving part. You can give a brief summary of uh, the grant and uh, what the additional monies in the grants are going to be used for them, few projects. Okay. So uh, we started last uh, Thursday and Friday paving um, at Aqueduct Road. Um, we are currently paved all the way up to Line Drive. Um, and they will be finishing the paving of the path today. Uh, we would have been finished yesterday, but uh, with the rain in the afternoon, uh, we stopped the paving uh, so that we would get good adhesion to uh, the bike path. Um, I had spoke with Matt uh, in front of the old water and sewer garage. There's currently two entrances. Um, we're gonna level the path out there so that it's uh, not at such a tilt, and we're going to remove the second driveway. Um, so, and that that's all coinciding with uh, the building coming down and the new parking area and stuff. So I have advised Matt of that. Um, and uh, Matt was good with the intentions as well. So, um, but they should be finished up today. And, uh, you know, asphalt's at an all-time low. We're, we're getting a super great deal on this. Um, and, you know, thank you to Newcastle for agreeing to do it. Um, I, I think it's a great project. The people that have been out uh, speaking with DJ out there with the pavers um, have just been so excited about it. Um, I did reach out to Capel um, to let them know that our crews would be working in front because obviously of their guard shacks and, stuff like that. They're protective. So uh, everything went well. Now it's to you, Laura. Okay. I just wanted to say, I mean, I, I, I know what's going on with that grant, but I live right off of the bike path and maybe, you know, didn't take put two and two together or whatever, but my daughter and I just went down there the other day and I was like, oh, it's so nice. Like she can speak to it. It was great. My whole neighborhood got super excited because it's just, it's very nice. So thank you for um, coordinating with all the contractors for that, Ray. Um, the other parts of that grant are two improved crossings on River Road to get the neighborhood safely over to the newly paved bike path. Um, so the the Riverdale one, which is currently perpendicular, or sorry, sort of at a skew, um, we want to make it perpendicular. Um, that may end up being covered by the Celts Farm Project, in which case we would reach out to the state and see if we can pick another crossing to use this funding for. And the other one that we're, you know, trying to engineer right now is the St. Joseph's. There's just such a high volume of people that cross at St. Joseph's to get from those neighborhoods over to the bike path. So Duke, uh, like a rapid flashing beacon there to get them over. And on Notch Street also, where there's a lot of pedestrians and bicyclists, a lot of um, families that are trying to get to schools and um, co-op and different places in Olnisk Una. So we picked a, cr a crossing on Knott Street at Regent and would do probably a push button crosswalk flashing sign and then um, finish the sidewalk on Knott Street. Uh, there's one section, I think, between Lexington and Baker that isn't paved and that's because the town of Olnisk Una and the city of Schenectady line goes right through that block. So this grant would be to get to the NISC Una line, um, but we've been coordinating with the city of Schenectady and reached out to them a couple of times. And if we can get to our line, we have the hard side, the expensive side, the side that needs probably potentially retaining walls and some grading. Theirs is pretty easy. So, so um, we can use the grant money, which is very helpful to get to our line and then continue to work with them to, so that they can finish that block so that people can walk safely you know, between jurisdictions, which would be great. Yeah, it's all really great, great efforts to connect 
uh, everybody and, uh, you know, continue our efforts to make the ski unit more walkable and bikeable. Um, and speaking of that, uh, you know, we did put out a press release and communication about the bike path repaving, which again, the photos I've seen are beautiful. I'm going to go check it out personally today as well. But um, later today, I'm going to put out um, some information to everyone um, about, uh, you know, Assemblyman uh, Phil Stack, who helped us procure the money and is a real champion for, um, you know, again, uh, connecting spaces, et cetera. Um, is going to, or we're going to have a, a little press event on Friday. So I'll, I'll send something out today to everybody um, for everyone to join us perhaps and thank Phil and, you know, see the bike path up close and be a nice, be a nice thing. So um, look for that later today. Um, all right. Then uh, the next thing on the agenda is the the beautification contribution that we got from our from master gardener um colleen abercrombie cast um she sent us some pictures she was down at lions park in the gazebo did some beautiful plantings gotten some positive feedback from that i reached out to her to um to thank her on behalf of the town and also um you know we want to we want to celebrate that um so i suggested maybe a ceremony ceremonial you know resolution thanking her for that um, effort. Um, anybody else been down there to see that? It looks great. I, I was down, down there the other morning looking for turtles and um, noticed it myself. It looks beautiful. I was so, down there as well. I was yeah. down there as well and it did look, she did a wonderful job. Yeah. And Ray, thanks for, you know, helping us out with that. We had a, you know, we had a call with Colleen and Ray of course was ever helpful in terms of you know, helping her um, figure out how to, you know, where she could do the plantings, et cetera. And, and, um, and soon she'll have access to water there. I mean, she's trucking over water still, right? I think, right, because we don't have that open. Yeah, yeah. Not, but, not but, currently. Yeah, but, but soon she'll be able to do that. So again, great contribution. Uh, one of the many things that makes this unit so great is our community members and uh, their gifts and talents. Um, so the next update is on the uh, Knott Street Improvement Plan. Um, we had, to, you know, we had, last time we met, we had proposed um, a, a resolution to move forward with MJ Engineering to consider treatments. Um, the Via Del Mar residents asked us to consider another uh, option. And, you know, so uh, I moved to table that motion uh, and that was done unanimously. Um, I know there's still uh, there's still up in the air in terms of what the county is going to do exactly with um, the parking lot, but the fact remains that we still have issues. We you know we, always uh, we were going to look at Crescent, um, right, Laura? You know what was going on beyond there that that um, intersection back there. Um, you know we still will have residual effects regardless. Um, because of the project. So the discussion was that we would get additional proposals for additional engineers to take a look at all the surrounding streets, Crescent, Via Del Mar, Almeria, Clifton Park, uh, regardless. And again, it will, you know, depending on what the county ends up doing with that parking lot or any other changes they make, that'll, um, that'll direct, you know, what we might, how the town might have to react. We're still going to have to do, you know, some treatments or, you know, uh, look at what we, um, what effects uh, the final plan has on all those. So Laura, um, you were gonna reach out uh, to some engineers and get super some requests uh, for proposals done, correct? Yep, I did I did let MJ know what was going on. Um, you know, they were a little disappointed, but wanted to just still wanna support what's best for the town. So they're happy to, um, you know, support us in whatever capacity that they can. So I was going to reach out to a couple small firms and uh, maybe a couple larger firms and just take a look at what the spread of, um, you know, quotes um, comes back at. And then we would um, probably just email that. I mean, if in committee, we just want to say, generally speaking, that we know we want to move forward with that at the end of the meeting, um, you know, we can like have an internal meeting with looking at the different proposals and then let people know before ahead of the next town board meeting, maybe at the agenda meeting. That sounds good. Um, Laura, let's make sure 
I had communicated with the county legislators about any information that they had in terms of studies or otherwise, and they were happy to share that. Now, I don't know if they have that, if MJ has it, who has it, but we should make sure that whatever's been done, they've already told me they would share that. Um, so uh, in terms of, you know, whatever studies they had already uh, looked at and had, we should get, you know, we should get those. They've offered them up. I just want to make sure we, we do follow up and get them. And I don't know if that would be from, you know, Paul Sheldon at the county or, you know, from NJ directly. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. I will, I'll reach out to the county and, and follow up with them. Okay. Thanks, Laura. Rosemary, uh, Paul Briggs. Go ahead, Paul. I understand that I, I believe uh, Councilman McGraw is going to be offering a resolution that will need to go on the agenda to uh, prohibit any curb cuts on Via Del Mar. So I just wanted to let Alexis know that, that there'll be a resolution, I believe, from her uh, requesting that action by the town board. No. Uh, come through uh, Public Works, or is it going to be coming through Highway Parks and Rec? Will we just, meaning, will we be able to discuss it and flush it out during committee tomorrow? No, I think it's, it's through this committee. Through what committee? Well, through highway because it's highway. The highway involves uh, the highway superintendent is the one that's in charge of curb cuts. Yeah, I'm. I'm. So I. If there's some uh, what 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 that is, I don't know. Uh, so my understanding in any information I've seen about it, it was, um, you know, through uh, the you know Councilwoman McGraw, Councilman Delarada, and Councilman McPartland. So. I haven't seen any language or anything. I've just seen um, some general information about it. So if they want to communicate with me about that, that would be great. Uh, I guess I just assumed that it was coming through another committee. If that's not the intention, then I guess, uh, you know, one or one of them can have, we can have a conversation. Um, but regardless, I, you know, I, so I was generally aware of it, but um, I don't think it changes the issue about the inch because whether the curb cuts occur or not, there was still, there's still going to be effects and there's still a need for uh, looking at, for example, uh, you know, Crescent. We were always going to be, you know, my understanding is from attending the meetings last year is that we hoped in connection with what the county project was doing um, along the um, co-op side of Knott Street that we might look at cleaning up that intersection at Crescent behind the co-op, maybe adding some parking because that's a town road you know, et cetera. So regardless of how this ends up playing out with the curb cuts um, or or not onto Via Del Mar, there's still going to be a need uh, for, you know, engineers to work with us on looking at the other streets, you know, Crescent, you know, there's still going to be effects. Um, so this is, you know, I know it'll change depending on how that plays out, but I still think this resolution, uh, you know, there'll still be a need to hire engineers for those purposes. Am I is, you know, Laura, isn't that correct? Yeah, I think that's 100% correct. And I'm happy to flush it out a little bit more at the Public Works Committee as well. But my recommendation would be, um, you know, not to not to preclude any possibilities until we've actually had that engineering so that we can look at all the options. Because, you know, I just think that you probably want to look at it holistically and then figure out how we want to do treatments on our side streets. That's just my recommendation. Right, correct, correct. So, so this resolution. Thanks for that, Paul. But I think the resolution, regardless, you know, of how that um, the curb cuts or not curb cuts uh, plays out, will still be, you know, something we'll need to move forward with. It'll just be, you know, what they're looking at may be different than what they might be looking at today. It might be different by the time you know this all plays out. So. Paul, you're a little garbled. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off my mics and we'll see if that helps. Everybody else, if you're not speaking, turn your mic off, please. Is this the intent of the society who had an impact on the moon? Oh, Paul, it's still really garbled. Everybody else, right? Everybody, I can't hear you. It sounds like you're in a fishbowl underwater. Um, Paul, you can type your question. Still bad. Same yeah, thing. Bad. Uh, supervisor said suggesting maybe everybody turn their speakers down. That might help. Oh, 
No, sorry, Paul. Can you type it in, perhaps? No. We we could hear you fine up until just now. That's very odd. Maybe I'll sound better. I don't think I can anything. No. Just, Paul, try signing out and hit the join, and then join right back in. Let's give him a second. That's how the problem. Yes, much better. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just wondering: is the intention of this study to Im have an impact on the county plan? Uh, no, 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 right? Yeah, no, no. Again, I think it's just what, depending on what the final solution for everything is, there was always going to have an effect. Residual. Well, I okay. I, under I understand. So. My my thought, and coming and not being that, that involved in this, is that why wouldn't a study be done after the work has been done and include some traffic data to make improvements or modifications that would m make the most sense? I mean, you may be making modifications that are unnecessary, or uh, it seems like you're shooting in the dark here to me. No, it's actually um, because it's sort of the same reason that we're trying to coordinate with the Schenectady County on the sidewalk because we would hopefully tag on. So if we were to bid, like if we're definitely need to do something with Crescent and if it requires curbing and additional sidewalk islands or something like that, if we were to put that out to bid, you know, it would, you know, be substantially larger than if we just uh, add on to what the county's doing, you know, on our own so that all the construction happens at once. So we're not impacting businesses any more than we have to. So I understand that, you know, I understand that aspect, but it's beyond that. It's talking about traffic calming and um, even the area that it includes. It seems like this is just going to potentially push your problem to Valencia. And I don't know. I just... Uh, I can understand the crescent aspect and coordinating with construction, but it's in the immediate vicinity, but this is a larger uh, look. Yeah, my recommendation would be to do it now um, because you can, I think you it's better planning to do it earlier than later. Um, I don't think that you always wanna wait and see. I think you wanna be proactive and make sure that you have prescriptions ready to go for you know any of the impacts. Um, but, you know, that's something always that's left up to the committee. My recommendation is to do it in conjunction with what's going on now. Paul, you may be right that there may be things that happen afterwards that, you know, that um, need to be addressed, um, you know, in terms of, you know, of traffic. And that that may be. But uh, I guess, you know, to Laura's point, there's some things that probably can be anticipated. And it makes sense to sort of, you know, look at those now and anticipate them and, try and get ahead of them if we can we may not we may not get everything there may be uh things that that happen as a result of traffic traffic patterns that aren't anticipated but um and again this is this is just to have them look um have some meetings to get some feedback you know potential proposals it's not for the actual work or anything that's so sort of no, i understand yeah it just seems that the traffic calming type of um actions on roads that are further away from the work site, um, it'd be best to have real data and uh, actual. You, um, you may be right. You may be right. And that may end up being, you know, there is, again, there may be things we can't anticipate. There uh, may be facts, all right. But, um, and, and we'll, 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 you know, we'll see, you know, um, but um, again, I, I, I guess I, you know, I, I agree with Laura that I think it's, it's good to get some, um, initial involvement and see what can be foreseen and try and address those things in connection just because it's a cost there's a cost savings there i understand that in the immediate vicinity of the project and in conjunction with the project that makes absolute sense everyone's yeah. mobilized definitely mm -hmm. 
We'll see. But they, no, good point though, Paul. Um, all right. Um, I had one more thing to add to this sort of section that I think we forgot about or that I failed to put on the agenda. I just wanted to give a, an update on the Rosendale roundabout. It's a, another county project. Obviously they've, you know, they've started there and uh, effective yesterday, there was some closure. Um, we put out some, the county put out a press release. It was in the paper. I know uh, the town through the supervisor's office put out some information about closure. So I just wanted to, you know, note that as well. Um, and so we'll continue to get, you know, updates on, um, I think it's like a five week uh, time frame in terms of closure. Uh, some residents were interested in, I think there's a, um, it's a schedule to get to Iroquois and Rosendale for kids and parents to pick up uh, stuff that was left behind in the school closure. And I think those are, there's some appointments um, and people were worried about being able to get to Iroquois and Rosendale. Um, it, so it, the streets are open to local traffic, which will include people getting to their appointments at those schools to pick up um, their kids' items from school. So I just wanted to say that publicly. Um, does anybody else have anything to add to that issue? And I believe Matt, um, if Matt Yetto is still on the call, right, the, the, the water um, work is also being done in connection with um, the county's project at the Rosendale Roundabout, correct, Matt? Yes, um, in fact, the, the water work is complete. And uh, we have a sewer force man on the other side of the road, which their design did not account for. And they're, they were cutting so much fill uh, on that one side that it was going to expose the pipe and wouldn't have adequate cover. So the county is relocating that force main at no cost to the town. We're working with the, uh, the county's engineer to um, spec out and make sure that we get the proper materials and construction practices that we would we would normally do ourselves. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Rosemary? Yes. Um, late yesterday, um, the owner of Mario's actually ran into Linda and I outside, and they were um, concerned about the closure because um, they weren't aware, with it, aware of it. And obviously, as a small business restaurant, a locally owned, um, they're struggling right now. And so the road closure was kind of like very alarming to them. We did let them know to reach out to the county, like maybe there was something that they could talk to them about or some way that, you know, they can help. But I just would say like publicly, like Mario's is still open, still delivering, still taking orders. Um, please feel free, you know, to, because I think that don't or trying to mitigate all any additional impacts to our, you know, small businesses. So anything that anybody can do to help um, with, with that, there's just, I think, one business on that whole corridor that's affected it being closed, maybe two. Um, but anyway, they were they were suffering a little. So anything anybody can do to help them would be great. That, that's a good point. Thanks, Laura. Um, so I can actually reach out to Katrina myself, um, the owner there. And um, and I'll uh, be in contact with the county legislators about it and make sure they maybe in their next communication, they could put something out about that as well, that it remains, you know, open or, you know, et cetera. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll follow up. But thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, certainly don't, we don't want to, um, you know, further hinder their success. It's a great local business. And um, so good. And maybe in the next communication about it, if from the town, we can make sure to say that, you know, they're, they're still open, et cetera. We'll, um, we'll, we'll address that. Thank you. Um, okay. If we're done with that part, we're going to move on to, recreation. All right, for my summer programs update for playground camps, I am going to ask um, Supervisor Syed if she wants to say something and jump in for a minute before I start. Sure, I can do that. Thanks, Lori. Um, we've had the internal question and also the external question about you know, the fate of our summer camps. So um, in light of the governor's recent um, announcement that summer camps could reopen on June 28th. Um, I, I do think that we should um, we should plan to move ahead with opening our summer camps um, to open up registration, albeit um, camp is not going to be like what it was in the past years. And it's probably not going to begin until the week of July 6th. And I don't know if that's on par with prior years. Um, but 
uh, everything will be limited to um, a certain amount of kids. Um, the CDC has issued youth programs uh, guidance during COVID-19 pandemic. And so there are ways that we can apply um, a very specific decision chart that they've issued um, here at the town um, to make sure that our camps are running as safely as possible. Um, but again, Lori can speak more specifically as to, you know, which summer camps are going to be running. Again, it is going to be, you know, different this year, but um, we will open it up to registration and we will cap it and we'll see what happens. And then in addition to that, um, I don't know if Paul Briggs is still on the call or not, but um, we are going to plan to reopen the town pool uh, July 1st. So um, hopefully we can meet that deadline. Again, Lori did point out um, earlier in the meeting that we're going to have to wait on the county for a permit um, and Department of Health guidance on that. So hopefully we'll still be on track for that reopening. Um, and again, it's it's a wait and see situation with that. Um, but with the playground camps, um, hopefully we'll we'll be bringing them back successfully this summer. Go ahead, Lori. Yeah, Thank you, Supervisor. Sorry, Lori, before you jump in, I, I did want to let people know that we've been meeting um, Lori and, and Julie and her staff, and we've been working very, very hard uh, at, uh, you know, co at coordinating a very different look for uh, summer camps. And we've been, you know, meeting regularly. They've been communicating with other municipalities um, about their plans and best practices, et cetera. Um, as the supervisor said, it's going to look really different. And just earlier this week, we had a meeting of the, you know, again, the group that Lori's, uh, Lori and Julie and staff about summer camps. And we've learned that a couple of our sites, our big sites, uh, Hillside and VA will not be available because school facilities are still closed and they won't be available to us. And also we've lost three of our, um, you know, Julie and uh, Lori had been reaching out to their regular camp counselors and we've lost three of our, you know, very strong um, leaders. So I was gonna suggest after today we reconvene um, that group and talk about the particulars of something um, as the supervisor said that's gonna be different, but certainly much smaller because we've lost some space and we've lost some strong you know, leadership. Um, so with that in mind, I will now uh, hand it over that we'll, you know, we'll, we'll continue, but um, why don't you bring us up to date, Lori? You got it. Well, just to let you know that after this meeting, um, Julie, Lisa and myself are meeting to put together a very comprehensive plan once we found out that the governor was giving us the green light, um, we went gangbusters and we've come up with what I think a nice pared down solution to camp. Um, it's going to be a little bit more, well, it's going to be very different than in years past, but still fun yet safe at the same time. Um, so this afternoon, maybe we can get together again and we'll talk about our plan. But um, as they said, the, um, Playground camp should start on July 6th. We're going to keep this um, the usual five week program. We have, as of now, three sites, which is Avon Crest for um, kindergarten through seventh, River Road for kindergarten through second, which has changed a little bit um, from years prior. It used to be kindergarten to, through third, and Blatnik will now be third through seventh. And the reasoning for adjusting the River Road and Blatnik Park is River Road was very heavy. Blatnik, not as much, and we figure by adjusting the grades, we will now be able to even out the number of kids that will attend. We are going to cap um, each site, and we were also looking at a possible location of um, the community center pavilion because it's quite large. It has a huge green space um, for grades three through seven, and that's also on our uh, list to talk about today. Um, so as I said, it's going to start July 6th. So we're really, really hoping to hear from Department of Health to get some guidance from them because just like the pool, our camps need um, approval as well. All of our safety plans for both the pool and um, playgrounds have been submitted. So they have all everything that they need from us. We're just waiting to hear back from them. So fingers crossed. Um, as far as our sports camps, it's quite a pared down list from years prior due to COVID, but we still have a few camps, um, lacrosse for boys and girls, tennis lessons for um, youth and adult um, running. And 
I'm waiting for some a confirmation on dates for lacrosse. He was going to um, try to push it back to later in the season, just in case phase two or phase three or phase four gets held up. We're not constantly um, changing people's reservations. So um, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll have the flyer updated and we can get that out there. It has um, information on um, swim team, swim lessons, um, pool passes, these camps. It's not like it was in years past, a nice big book, but it's something that will give you all the information you need on what we have offering. Um, as for our concert series, Julie Lore has been working diligently because we were supposed to start, um, I think the beginning of June, end of May, but I'm gonna defer to Julie so she can tell you um, where she stands right now. Julie, your mic is off. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Am I on? Yes, you're on. Good morning. Okay. All right. Good. Um, so as Lori said, we did have to cancel our first three concerts. So we've pushed everything back. We're hoping to uh, begin on June 25th with our, um, as, as holding June 25th as our first concert, it will be uh, the Brass Abbey which is uh, Phil Pandori from the high school um, music department. He has a, a, a brass quintet that are um, phenomenal. Um, this group's made up of music teachers from several school districts and they have played for us before. I did receive update later last night um, from Fenimore Blues. We had offered them um, July 2nd, which is a date we don't normally we don't normally schedule a concert for that first week in July. We feel normally people might be out of town on vacation, but this year with extenuating circumstances, we thought, you know what, especially since we're trying to um, reschedule some of the people we had to cancel, let's open it up. And he reached out to his group and they um, would love to take that date. So we now have, um, we now have concerts scheduled from, on Thursday evenings from June 25th, uh, right through July 16th. I'm hoping on July 23rd, we had a cancellation and I have offered that to Bill Lawrence for the Bill Lawrence trio. And he's going to get back to me whether July 23rd would work for him. If it doesn't, we can also um, investigate scheduling a Tuesday evening concert, um, you know, during one of these weeks. So right now we have a nice tight schedule running right through August 13th. Uh, we are not going to have any partners, as we like to call them, at our concerts this summer. So we won't be serving any food um, in terms of um, trying to um, help people maintain social distance and with the COVID concerns. Um, we, are, we are also looking into um, potentially marking um, some nice uh, social distance reminders on the grass at the town hall, um, just to remind families to, you know, to come, enjoy, stay together, um, and just to help remind people to, uh, to keep their social distance. But all of the groups that I had reached out to were, were still um, very excited about moving forward, and they all were sure that they could uh, do so um, among themselves, adhering to social distance. So we're excited about the concerts. Um, should I move right into the municipal survey yes, results? Ahead, sorry. Um, okay, so as um, Rosemary has said, we have been reaching out to um, other municipalities, just trying to find out what their plans are. Uh, Lori and I had a meeting on Tuesday afternoon um, with uh, a recreation group um, that um, expands all the way up to um, Queensbury and um, Saratoga Springs. And it was a, a really nice, it was a really great meeting, um, very informative. Um, at that point in time, so many people were just like us. They're in a holding pattern. We are all just waiting for further guidance. Um, it was great getting that guide, you know, getting the go ahead yesterday. And so then that whole group just messages started flying back and forth. 
and uh, and I tried to update um, my survey sheet as best as I could. Uh, I did forward that to Alexis. Um, so the only addition to what I sent to you, Alexis, is that uh, Gilderland is now planning on opening um, their uh, summer camp program on June 29th, and they are shooting for Monday, July 6th uh, to open their pool. Um, uh, there are a lot of programs that made the decision early to cancel all their camp programs um, and also to close their pools out of uh, COVID concerns. Uh, a lot of these uh, municipalities did have to make those decisions um, just based on um, uh, on financial reasons. Uh, they just couldn't um, put the, uh, they couldn't outlay the resources um, with a fairly good chance that things might not be allowed to go forward. But there were a lot of people in the same position as the town of Niskayuna that we were just gonna keep moving forward until we were told otherwise. So um, I think all of those programs are, um, I think we're all very relieved to finally get some guidance. And, um, and now, now that we have a direction to focus in, like Lori said, we're going to be meeting this afternoon. We are going to be full steam ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll get this program, we'll get this program tailored. It's going to be new. It's going to be different. It's going to be smaller and, uh, and it's definitely going to be safer. And we may not have the number of kids that we normally would have, but I think we're going to have kids who who um, just might, for whatever reason, really need to be getting out of their house and, and doing some socializing, and we're going to give them a, a safe way to do that. One of my thoughts from the very beginning is that if, with the potential for school to be reopening in September, we're being presented with a phenomenal platform to, to begin educating um, the community in terms of social distancing. And we're giving these kids the opportunity to practice. Um, they're going to get used to wearing a mask out in public and, and learning social distancing and practicing hand washing and practicing all of the protocol that we've all been doing within the confines of our homes to, to stay safe from this virus. Um, now that we're going out into the world and their parents are not necessarily going to be with them every step of the way, uh, this, gives, um, this gives them a, a chance to really start putting into practice what they have been taught. Um, it's a great opportunity. We've known for uh, a million years that our camp counselors and supervisors um, are, are phenomenal role models and this, you know, and they're going to be modeling this behavior. And everybody knows that as a parent, you can tell your children something, but um, sometimes when they hear it from other sources and maybe, you know, teenagers and friends and, you know, camp counselors who they look up to, um, it's going to have a different impact. So I'm really excited about this. And I think, uh, like I said, it gives us a phenomenal platform to, for kids to get out and start practicing all of these behaviors that are going to be instrumental in our schools being, op being able to open safely in the fall. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions on the survey, but if not, I can jump into the um, just touch basically on the pavilion rental update. I wasn't really sure what we're looking for. We had put pavilion rentals on hold um, back in March. Uh, the people who had reservations for, uh, for May and for June, I have everybody canceled with the exception of one gentleman who really still wants to have a birthday part of like a first or second birthday party for his child at River Road on June 27th, I believe. And I have reached out to him and informed him that that won't be possible unless we have reached um, phase four of the reopening plan where recreation falls. And, um, and, and that until that happens, there won't be restrooms. We won't be able to, uh, we won't be able to, um, 
he won't be able to hold his event. Um, and even reaching out to him and really laying it all out on the line, he still got back to me that he, he'd like to wait and see and, and he doesn't want to make that decision yet. And I didn't really feel like I was asking, giving him the option to make that decision. I was hoping he would just say that he understood and, and would want to reschedule for another date, but he did not yet. Um, so, so yeah, with, with that said, I mean, so um, I, I think that we should probably hold off on doing any rentals until further notice. My thinking is that we need the pavilions for the summer playground camp and it adds another layer of complexity to be knowing that if there was a big party there over the weekend that now uh, the potential for, you know, being contaminated, what have you. Um, so I would Absolutely. say, I mean, hold it. I know it seems like a big ask, but perhaps hold off until August for re if people want to reschedule. Um, additionally, we could, potentially do the pavilions at the um the rec center but or the community whatever community center park the one over on aqueduct road except we might be using that location potentially for the playground camp so i would also caution against that i looked to see what other um you know locales were doing uh what to me just jumped out was that new york state you know the dec and parks recreation and historic preservation are saying no uh pavilion reservations for the 2020 season so yeah, interestingly, I'm sure uh, I'm I'm sure that probably other people have seen that same information as I have as well, and uh, because interestingly, normally my phone is just blowing up at this time of year with people and people from out of the town. I have to turn people away right and left if they're not residents, uh, but I get a million calls, and I'm always just saying, you know, the reservations, you know, everything is is online, and all you have to do is is go to our website, and you can make that reservation. Well, I get a notification when when reservations are made, um, and obviously with everything being with it being closed online, I would have thought I would be hearing from people right and left that they're trying to make a reservation and they can't, and there's nothing. Um, nobody is, I, I probably got, I probably got since March, I think I've gotten two phone calls from people wondering, you know, about the possibility of making reservations and it was for later in the summer. And I just told them both that, you know, until further notice, we're not taking them. Um, and, uh, and I do agree. I totally agree with you, Alexis, in that, um, if we are, if we are moving forward and we are holding camp then I think we have a responsibility to the camp program to keep the, those playgrounds and um, pavilions and restrooms and everything um, as, as clean and germ-free as possible. And bringing in a large group on a weekend um, is, uh, would, not be, uh, would not be in our best interest. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm, yeah, I'm not fine sure. with that. Like, I'm not sure if this is a finance committee decision or if it can just be an, you know, an internal decision made at your department level. Um, but I would recommend just taking down the link so that people aren't confused and perhaps just saying, you know, it will be either rather than give false hope and say until further notice, say until there will be no pavilion rentals until at least at the earliest August 2020. Um, but that's subject to change. Do we have any any? Well, like, what is our obligation towards the gentleman that already has a reservation? Um, you know, it, it, it's within our right to tell him that we need to cancel that. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, just provide him with a refund. Yeah. And that's not a problem at all. Okay. Um, yeah, we probably should do that. Take that. Take them down off of our website. And, um, and, and again, if you look around at others, while I was, while I was doing the survey, in terms of summer programs and pool, um, going to all of those communities, web pages and stuff, that jumped out a lot that people were not, uh, people were closing reservations of all their facilities for the summer. So um, so I don't think that will come as a surprise to anybody. We are, we are right, we are right in line with what every other community is doing. And Paul Sebesta, that will have a de minimis impact on our re revenue projections for 2020, right? We don't, this isn't a, a heavy revenue line. No, fifteen to twenty thousand range, I believe, off the top of my head. It seems to me, with uh, the you know, with Ray trying so hard through his department to get caught up and then stay caught up, 
um, this will be great to take it off of his plate as well, because that's always a huge factor is getting the, um, getting the pavilions and the rest restrooms clean um, after weekend events so that they're ready for, um, for, for the upcoming week. Okay, well, thank you. I can, the, the, the enthusiasm that you, Julie, and you, Lori, and Lisa are bringing is palpable. So um, great, thank you so much. Um, We're so happy to have a direction to focus on now. <laughs> it was really hard being in a holding yeah. pattern. Yeah, yeah, but you guys have been fabulous. I have every confidence that it's going to be a you know fabulous new and revised. I was I, you made you made you made hand washing sound exciting, honestly. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of it, so uh, it better yes. be fun. There will have to be. Okay, all right, more to come on that. Um, all right, so we'll move on to driving range. Okay, great. So we're hoping to open up the driving range on June 27th. This gives um, Ray's crew enough time to, I know they're so behind, but to catch up on mowing. Plus there's a lot of upfront work that needs to be done at um, that site. We have to pick balls. We have to um, get the mat set out, make sure everything is cleaned and sanitized. Um, need to get a big bucket um, with solutions. So when someone comes back with their um, bucket of balls um, that they've used, they can put the bucket into um, the cleaning solution so that can be cleaned on a daily basis. Um, we've revised our work schedule a little so there's only one person working at a time um, with three different shifts and on the Monday evening when they do the group um, sweep and pick up of the grass sometimes they have to hand pick as well because the balls get plugged um, there's more than enough room for them to space out so social distancing will not be an issue. Um, Cleaning and disinfecting on a daily basis will be of door handles, the ball dispensers, and the balls will be done every evening as well. Um, and the mats spaced out at least 10 feet. So when someone's up there hitting balls or um, enough distance between uh, each other, I don't see that this could be an issue at all. Larry? Yes. Um, I spoke with Andrew. Uh, they will put the mats, you know, like we talked about, every other mat, which will be approximately 10 feet apart. Um, they're currently servicing the ball picker, uh, so that should be all ready for you to go. Um, I spoke with Charlie about turning the water on down there. Um, one thing you may want to do is make up some uh, just generic signs for uh, – keep in mind social distancing for people coming up. I don't think it has to be anything special. We'll post them on the building. Yeah, uh, we talked that about, might, we talked that might be as well for the playgrounds as well. Yeah. yeah oh, we without a doubt. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and it, with respect to signage, I post, there's signs posted um, over the, the playgrounds that is consistent with what other localities are doing for the open playgrounds. Sorry, Terry Lair wants to be on the screen. So hold on one second. Okay. So now she'll stop crying. That just they kind of use the playgrounds at your own risk because they're not sanitized. That's in compliance with CHC guidelines. So if you see those signs, that's where those came from. Okay, Taylor? There we go. All good. Whatever you want to do, Lori, I'm good with it. Ray, thank you so much. Your crew is phenomenal as always. And without you guys, there's no way we could get this up. I do have one question. The net... Um, that borders the hill, is that still up or does that have to be um, put back up? Uh, we actually hang it from the top. We'll we'll have that done for you before you Wonderful. start. Wonderful, oh, you're day. the best. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, now I'm gonna move on to summer book and staffing. I touched on the summer book earlier that it's gonna be um, a pared down version, but should be posted by the end of the week. I'm just waiting for some final details and we maybe we could throw the concert um, series in there as well, as well as putting on the website. Um, as far as civil service packets, um, I've already emailed a bunch and all the directions out to the pool staff. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from them. And at the end of this week, we're going to be sending it out to the playground staff as well. This is a project, not to... <laughs> It's going to be tough, but we can get it done. We're going to have kids um, meet us at town hall outside with masks, um, check their packets, make sure um, they're complete, and then push them on to their online portion. 
Um, Lori, remember, you, you guys did ask, we talked about this and I talked to Paul Sebesta about returning staff to that we can save on some, um, some of those steps. If we have their information, it's still valid, et cetera. Um, you know, definitely. Okay. Yes. And we did find out, um, Julie was able to find out how to get working papers and it's a little bit of a process, but you just have to contact the, um, Assistant principal, he'll check with the school nurse, make sure that their physical is up to date on file. If not, then a parent can fax or send in the physical so the nurse can then sign off on the card and then the card will be mailed to um, the child. So this is going to take a while for them to get their cards in. So that's why I want to jump on it this week and get it out and then um, follow up with the pool people as well and get try to get these packets done so I'm not overwhelmed at one time with... 150 packets. So it's doable, but it's going to be a process. Um, and as far as resolutions, um, once again, hoping to appoint and hire a bus driver, we still have not received anything. Um, Bob said he's more than willing to hang out for a bit. He's happy with the way things are moving. And if the seniors don't open up their program immediately, he's able to make it work. So I don't, I'm not nervous, but I'm hoping late by early fall, the latest, we can get a bus driver in place. And that's the latest. Laurie, um, and pardon me? Laurie, did you, um, I know you were initially advertising at a significantly lower rate and I suggested bringing it up to um, our current No, we fixed rate. it. Yeah, and I fixed it. On. And the last blast was with the new rate. Good, thank you. Yeah, yep. Um, on the, another resolution is to appoint summer playground employees. That should be at the end of this month. Um, we're also reaching out to the kids to make sure that they do plan on returning. Um, I don't know, some kids may not feel comfortable in this current climate or may have found other employment, but that list um, will be done and ready for the end of the month. And also the few independent summer contractors that I have running programs, they will be on there as well. Hey, Lori, just quick question. This is obviously my first uh, summer uh, doing these resolutions. So do we do a resolution for the CITs or is that? No, I only paid employees. Oh, okay. that's what I thought. And there are no CITs this year. We had to cut out the CIT yeah. program okay. due to the volume. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's then, just, and it's not even junior counselors. It's just the um, paid staff. And we'll include language in the resolution. And I'm sure you said you were going to reach out that, you know, they have to, they understand that. We, we, hope, we hope to move forward, but that if there, if there is some, you know, COVID outbreak or for whatever reason we have to shut down the camps early, that they don't expect payment for the full term. Exactly. And you know what? I will reach out with you today, show you what we're going to send out, because I want to get this out the door ASAP, and then maybe you can help me tweak it so I can uh, email it out right away. You know what so. we need to add while I'm thinking about this? We've been through it, but we never we didn't add any information about weather. Remember we talked about the fact well, that we have to add that everywhere. That if Exactly. Know, that it's going to be shut down because we can't have people in close quarters, you know, under any space. We don't have space for that. So let's make sure we add that to the program booklet and just make that clear in our communications with staff and with campers, et cetera. You got it. I forgot to touch on that. And then, Lori, are you going to reach out to Councilman McGraw and just just confirm whether or not any additional uh, lifeguards or pool employees need to be added to the resolution? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, I have not received any other applications. I, every, I don't. It's, it's very strange this year. I think everybody's in a holding pattern. Um, but I'll definitely reach out to her before. I usually send her the list so she could review it before um, to see if I've missed anything, or and then she'll send it back. So if she has any additions, I'll get them from her. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, then uh, real quick, a farmer's market committee, we did meet uh, the supervisor and the group and we had discussions about, um, and we're having another meeting, I think this Thursday, uh, we talked about where we were, with the vendors, locations, um, folks from the co-op were actually going to look and measure out and see if they could, you know, uh, set up tents in a socially distant, appropriate manner um, either at the lot next to the co-op or the one across the way. We also talked about potential other locations, uh, including some of the town parks. I was concerned that as we start to open up things up, that that might create, create a problem. And I see that that is the way we're headed. So um, 
the other options that we, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, town hall was a uh, potential and um, possibly the high school parking lot. Um, so we're still working on that. We have another meeting on Thursday and, um, you know, we'll keep everybody updated uh, as to how that's going forward. And did I miss anything, Supervisor? Do you want to add anything? No, thanks. You covered it. Thanks, Rosemary. Okay. Uh, so let's go to senior program. Linda, you still with us? Yeah. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Great. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. I am going to try and be brief. <clears throat> I'll give you a quick rundown of what we've done lately um, with our program. Um, this past week, we kind of assembled and actually, our, uh, we just finished delivering about 36 care packages to our older seniors. And it was uh, care packages uh, that included activities of sorts, things that to keep their, you know, either do with their hands or also keep their minds active. So it's everything from, uh, we're actually doing a, launching a virtual bingo. Um, and we have um, like rainbow chain crafts. We have a note to self reflection exercise. We have word searches and puzzles and so on and so forth. So uh, Bob was instrumental in us getting that out to everybody. Um, we only had to mail a couple. Um, and again, that went to our older seniors, the ones that are more isolated because they're less tech savvy. Um, <clears throat> Edie is on her fourth batch of postcards, which will bring us up to about 400. Um, we are up on Zoom and YouTube for exercise classes. So, if you're, so Zoom is more of an appointment schedule and we have classes um, every day of the week. And then uh, YouTube, are those are videos that have been uploaded and they can be accessed anytime. So we have all of that going on. Um, we continue to call and reach out to our seniors. We did um, break them down into like the younger target and then the older target um, for, for various reasons and the message changed accordingly. So <clears throat> we just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of all of the resources that we've, you know, either we're providing or we're at least communicating other resources that are available to them during this time. So, and we've we've received some really nice feedback from folks. So that's that's always nice. Um, we are again rescheduling our calendar activities, you know, lectures and and whatnot um, that we had um, initially. Um, kind of plotted and planned. So I sent a generic message to the papers. It's our, it, it, it'll appear for like July. And it's, it's just, um, you know, kind of just states again or restates, here's our contact information. Even though this is still going on and there's still a lot of uncertainty, we are available now to help seniors or anybody. It kind of lists what we do. And then it also says, although we might not be reopening you know, and operating in the exact same capacity, we are going to be following the phases and we will get there. Um, and the paper, I did contact um, the Gazette and they did say that we could submit uh, on a weekly basis. So if we have updates as these phases start to really click, um, we can update our message more regularly. So that was nice. No charges uh, with that. Um, what else? Um, facility, <laughs> facilities, our little facility down there is just coming away. And uh, we've been, you know, flushing water pipes and do what we had. We had ants. They found us. Um, but, uh, you know, Ray's, Ray's team is just great. And they're very responsive. And we just, you know, between all of us, we just keep it humming. So we're in good shape. We're ready to rock and roll. Um, we are, we have been spending a lot of time on the outside because that uh, next phase of reopening, we have an opportunity to have people, you know, come and sit or, or do, you know, have a, a bottle of water or bring a bag lunch or whatever, but it's got to be outside. So we just, um, you know, we'll set up some chairs. We've got an umbrella out by the garden. Um, Ray's working with us to just make sure that there's a clear path. And um, we'll just make it as inviting and comfortable and as friendly as we can, knowing full well that, you know, whoever as we, we transition to these phases, that it all has to be, um, you know, follow the COVID protocol as far as cleaning and whatnot. So, so that's that. So, 
um, the phases. We have mapped out the I think it's the five phases of opening, reopening. The second phase would see us opening for just a couple hours, and it would be our outdoor spaces only. Um, right now, it is just the three of us, um, and it will continue. You know, we don't see any issues with that. I think we can we can manage. Um, we will continue with the, all of our exercise programming will be online. Um, so no in-house as of yet, uh, no meals or coffee services yet. If people want to bring stuff, it's carry in, carry out. We may put a, um, um, like a, a big bin with ice. Um, and that's one thing we do have to figure out is how we, how we, we don't have an ice machine down at the senior center. So we have to figure out how we do that. But uh, we could provide like bottled water or lemonades or whatever, and people could just you know grab and go. But it's strictly outside. Um, and then we do need to talk about uh, supplies as far as um, masks, wipes, cleaners, thermometers, whatever. Um, we have a basic amount, uh, like just a, a, an average amount of, of cleansers that we started with when this whole thing broke out. Um, but to keep up with an ongoing protocol, we would probably need to uh, just look at that and make sure we, we've got what we need. Um, that also is part of the reason for the abbreviated hours, because it gives us a chance to wipe everything down after everyone is on their way. So phase three, we'll probably see um, seniors, they can now access the community center. Uh, there will be some chairs that will be set up, but they will be distanced. We will probably be marking the floors, and we will be asking seniors to wear masks. Um, the exercise program, we're going to continue to do that uh, online. Uh, we will attempt games that involve no contact. Um, we'll have to think. We're, a lot of this we're going to have to think through, and we're working. We're kind of idea sharing now. Uh, we, we can utilize, uh, utilize iPads for online card games and so on and so forth. So, um, again, no meal, no coffee um, until we get to phase four. When we're in phase four, then we'll, then we'll talk about more of like resuming modified exercise classes and a, coffee, you know, a basic coffee service. Um, the, we can offer in-house exercise in a limited capacity. But, um, again, we'll just have to work out how we space people out upstairs. Um, and we will require folks to bring their own gear. So whether that's a mat or weights or whatever. And that avoids them having to use town equipment, at least for now. Uh, we can start up coffee and tea service only and we'll, everything will be disposable. Um, we have talked about the, the need to maybe have us for it, serve it so that it's not a self-serve setup as of yet. And then once, you know, down along the, the road when we get to phase five, then we'll, we'll talk about resuming the meal program and so on and so forth. So that's what we've been working on. Yeah, um, I saw the, um, um, you know, the complete detailed plan. I know, you know, I just want to say that we, we don't have any dates assigned to that yet, but I look like you really had given some, you know, a lot of thought to how you would, you know, slowly phase things in. So great job. And again, you guys have that, that weekly newsletter has been tremendous and the yeah. outreach, the postcards, the calls, the, you know, the zoom activities, you guys have been uh, gone above and beyond in terms of continuing to engage. And I'm sure our, you know, seniors uh, really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. And I neglected to mention that um, Lisa, uh, our ninth newsletter was just released. And, and that's, and, you know, we found a lot of seniors through this process who had bad email addresses or no email addresses. And so we've been going in and, and adding them in. So now they're, they're getting town as well as senior news, which is kind of, you know, a happy, happy accident. So yeah, nice. So another silver lining, as they say, you know, yeah. so yeah. And those have been, those new newsletters are chock full of great information. I read oh. them uh, every week. So they're Me just, but uh, just, again, those are just one of the many things that you guys have been, you know, doing. And I'm sure, you know, our seniors are feeling very isolated. And that really helps. Yeah. Thank you very much. Great job. Great job. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so when you do have dates, you know, again, like, yeah, I did, I, I assigned to those sort of phases, you can, you know, report out on that. We can, um, you know, continue to Absolutely. have that. Right, yeah, right. I didn't mean to be too vague, but we're just, a lot of it we're still trying to figure out as we go, so. Yep, no, absolutely. Um, thank you for that. Um, no. Okay, all right, I know it's been an extra long meeting. We had a lot of uh, information to cover. Uh, we are at the end here with open discussion. Are there any items that we um, failed to address or we need to address? Yes, Mr. Backus is raising his hand. We can't hear you. I know. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, it's been so long I forgot how to unmute my mic. Um, this is probably the best place to bring this up for all the town meetings. Um, I've gotten requests for two memorial benches for this season as we're starting to come out of the COVID isolation. Um, we've done the site work already for one on the bike path near the Ferry Road Bridge, and the other one will be at Lions Park. So as uh, as we can move those two benches forward, I'll keep you up to date. But people have already started to call and are filling out the paperwork. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Brian. It's nice to see things start to open up, right? I mean, we still, obviously, we have to exercise great caution and caution and safety should be, you know, our guiding principles moving forward, but good to see us moving forward. Uh, anything else? Uh, just wanted to mention this. I know I already talked to you about this, um, Councilwoman Jaquith, but I sent Ray an email and I wasn't sure if this is a police issue or a highway issue, but I noticed yesterday um, in Rose states that there was um, graffiti on one of the stop signs is that so I sent an email to Chief and Ray but I'm just going moving forward is that something that goes through highway and falls into maintenance or falls within vandalism with the police Ray. Highway. highway and it's already been taken care of thank you thanks Ray um, okay, if there's nothing else, we uh, need to um, schedule our July meeting, which looks like it should be July 1st at 8 a.m. It's the first Wednesday. So we'll do that. Um, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I will second. Okay, all in favor, anybody opposed? All right, everyone have a great day and thank you for your time and commitment. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Don't worry, Taylor will not say goodbye this time. <laughs>